Come, come, come. I know you want my attention. I'll give it to you. Stand in the tree pose there. I finished my work. How's your sex life? Charming, sexy. Look at them. Seduce them. Is she sexy? We were sent to a camp every summer for about six weeks where he would try to give us lectures on how to be a good wife or a good woman. Our only worth was either a happy husband or a happy yogi. But it essentially, it was six weeks of berating and making sure those women were subservient. Is she smiling? Is she sexy? Yogi Bhajan's abuse towards me started as soon as I was around him and his entourage. It turns out the secretaries are really just a harem of women at his disposal to either groom girls for him or be part of his bed, really night duty, and cleaning his house. Those were all things to get you ready to be in his bedroom. For a number of years, he was claiming celibacy. He didn't initiate sexual contact with me uh, for a few months. And by the time he did, I had hunkered down into the programming. And it was OK, because he was the teacher. And he was the one determining my life. But I learned that he had named me publicly in a way I did not n ever know about, Premka. It's a name that actually any Punjabi would know meant like a mistress. He claimed to have an exclusive relationship with me for eight years out of my 16 years until I found out he was having sexual relations with other women at the time. From the standpoint of the power dynamic, anyone that he was with was rape. Um, nobody feels they have much choice in this situation. You know, he's the one in control. There's a last point which I want to discuss with you. It is about rape. Rape is always invited. It never happens. A person who's raped is always providing subconsciously the environments and the arrangements. If you do not provide the circumstances and the arrangements, it is impossible. Rape can't happen uh, unless a woman invites it. There's no way that a woman can be raped. I mean, what an absurdity. Anyway, why do I, how do I feel about that? I feel like he was covering himself. I was cleaning the house, and he said, turn around for me, which I have subsequently learned was a common thing he did with people. And he touched my boobs, like very, as I tur finished turning around, like it, I remember it, it was almost like sizing me up. And then he said, you're turning out nicely. You know, like I'm getting ready for him, essentially. I was doing dishes and he came up from behind me and he grabbed my chest and he just kind of said, I'm just telling you to stand up straight and have a good posture. And he put his hands on my chest and he said, I'm very proud of these. He gave me a wedding ring, called me his wife, he said I was his youngest wife, I was his most innocent wife. I was his virgin wife, called me the virgin queen. Called me the virgin queen. And he starts yelling at me about not being a virgin. I essentially think he wanted to make sure I was a virgin so he could break me. He would force me to come watch pornography with him. He then said to me the next time he saw me, come get in bed with me. And he didn't stop asking me. And he changed it into, you need to learn how to kiss. Come make out with me. And I just got more and more aware of that I was in danger. I was freaked and I just wanted to get out of there. There was no one else there. I was so scared. The adrenaline was rushing and I walked to that door and I was like, I'm never going back. I think that if I had stayed, the abuse would have never ended. I'm not turning around. I am not going to give him a kiss. I am not going to get into bed. Looked at that door and I was just like in my mind thinking, 
I need to get out of here. Walked over to the bed and he reached for me and my whole body just like froze. My hands were shaking. I think he might have seen that I was crying. And then he just brought my face close to him and kissed me on my forehead. And I walked out of that room and I felt, I will not tell anyone this because I didn't want to hurt the community. And I thought that I was the only one and I thought it was worth holding it in so that no one else would hate him. Silently, many women in 3HO are suffering grievous abuse behind the scenes. Meanwhile, their venerated guru is meeting Pope John Paul II to discuss world unity. People come here like animals, eat, do everything, and die. But that's not human life. The 90s are jet-set years for Yogi Bhajan. When he's not entertaining dignitaries in his ashram, he's advising governors and meeting with the rich and powerful. I went all over the world. I feel God lives everywhere. There's so many people who'd set up a lot of this abuse in motion. I never warned anybody about what happened. I knew I wouldn't be believed. Things never changed. After 16 years, I chose to leave. Literally, I'm sure there's at least 100 women that he assaulted. There are many who will never speak up because he kept it covered. And people were terrified. If you listen to any negativity about the teacher, it will pollute your spiritual destiny and you will fall. You will fall from grace, you will fall. Whenever allegations emerged about his behavior, Yogi Bhajan returned fire. I, I don't know what the lies are. I don't believe, because my definition about lie is when you temporarily cannot face the truth. In 2004, after a long battle with diabetes and heart disease, Yogi Bhajan dies at his home in Espanola at the age of 75. Honoring the life and contributions of Yogi Bhajan, a leader of Sikhs, and expressing condolences to the Sikh community on his passing. Congress hails him as the king of spirituality. And recognize his legendary compassion, wisdom, kindness, and courage. But to many, his death means he'll never face justice. The amount of women that he did this to and the level of abuse, he sent us to the schools, he sent us to the camps. We were told to call him our grandfather. And the fact that we were just sexual beings for his taking is so infuriating and so hard. And it's like, I'm, I'm furious, I'm hurt. This is not the way a Sikh should behave. 